going to hit. <laughs> it's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, so I wanna tell you one of the things I love about aviation, it's the aviation family, the community of people you've never met that come up and say hi and they're automatically friends. And so I wanna tell you about a group I just met, Atlanta the Platas out in Colorado. And a couple of the line guys recognized me and they came right up and said, hi, you guys are awesome. And I told them I was gonna be back in like six hours. I had to do a trip up north and then back and drop off some friends in Colorado, some business partners, and then head back to Utah. And when I came back, a whole bunch of them came out and they're part of a flying club called the Meaty Boys. And they brought me this and a little Meaty Boys pin, told me I'm an honorary member of their flying club. So guys, if you can find a group of guys like my Flying Cowboys and all the different groups, the Stoll Rats, and there's a zillion of them, find a group of people in your area and go fly with them. It's awesome. And um, I feel like I'm a part of a lot of groups and I love every single group, so I hope all of you will let me come fly with you if I'm in your area. But hey, Meaty Boys, quick shout out. Thanks for coming and saying hi, and uh, I'll stop by another time, we'll go flying. Let's get back to work. Uh, all right, guys. So, I'm very excited to finally get back to work because I've been traveling on my work work and out of town for almost three weeks in and out of town, which means Staying in a hotel a state away or two or three, man, I haven't got anything on Scrappy. Normally I can work 10 hours a day for my job and then come work and spend a late night here, which I have not been able to do. So, let's fix it. I have only two days and I wanna get these windows done. So I'm gonna build carbon fiber subframe. I want to not have a bar through the middle here or Typically, there might be a, a door, a solid door that goes halfway and the window's above. I would like glass all the way down. So, I'm going to bend, heat up and bend a sheet over there, make a carbon fiber frame, make the frame strong enough to just be a perimeter frame without any center structure, and then let my bent window create the beam through the center and I'll make this strong enough that there is absolutely zero obstruction all the way down looking straight to the dirt below. So that's the goal. I'm gonna get to work. All right, what I'm doing here, setting the blade deck just barely thick, deeper than the thickness of the polycarbonate. So I'm using a Lexan poly, polycarbonate sheet. It's really tough stuff, really hard to break, really hard to crack um, for the side windows. I'll also be able to heat and put a kink bend in it um, as it shape traces the side of the plane. So um, I'm cutting it extra large right now. Then I'll set it up to the plane and kind of trim it out and kind of work it way until I get it absolutely perfect. And then we'll put a carbon fiber frame on it. So let's get to work. Hey, right, so I just permanently attached this carbon fiber square tube right here to give me something to fit to. This under lip right here, where the wing's gonna carry out. So I can just slide this up to that lip. Then I'm gonna trace out the shape, trim it out, and then you can see I'm gonna have to kick it right in the middle to get the, the arc I want. So take a little heat gun, we can do that in a minute. All right, this is officially the shape of my window. <laughs> Stupid tape. Stupid tape. <laughs> Let's cut it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, the aircraft has a definitive transition point. That's the majority of the bend in the frame of the airplane where the window is. Normally on Cubs, there'd be a metal bar through it and it'd be a hard transition, maybe a lower door and an upper door. 
or it'd be where a door that's one piece kinks and goes the other way. I don't want a frame in there, and so I'm building a subframe around this, especially on the door side, that's gonna get all the strength I need to not have to have a bar obstructing my view. But I don't want this Lexan to chatter in the wind at all. So I wanna put just a little bend in it so that it wants to hold an outward shape that kind of matches the airframe and also makes it so that um, if I just tried to bend it without putting a, a, bit, a, a minor kink in it, basically, um, there could be a chance at high speed that the window would want to wave a little and make a thumping noise. So we're gonna put a little crease line in it. Um, I always want to, I actually want the crease line right here, which is a quarter inch past my table that I'm using to fold it um, because it's, I'm gonna heat this whole line and as I bend, the bend always happens outside of your fold. So I'm just gonna hold that out about a quarter inch, heat this up, just put the slightest little arc to it and then we're gonna put it on the plane. Back to work. All right guys, so I've got this stuck on with 3M double stick pad and <laughs> it's really on there good. But that's not what I'm gonna rely on in flight, though that will stay there. This side I'm not having open, I'm only opening the other side. So this is gonna be an airtight, permanently closed window. So what I'm gonna do now, um, ignore this film. <laughs> that's still got the protective film on it, otherwise it would be really clear. But right now I'm gonna put some clear tape over top of the film down over, across this edge, and out onto this 3M foil. And I'm gonna now make the part that holds this on in flight, so I'm not relying on tape. And that's gonna be a carbon fiber strip that I'm gonna go all the way around and make a frame that chases this shape exactly. What I'm doing now is a trick I learned, I don't know why it took me a couple of years to finally one day figure it out. But often when you're making a trim, you always have to make the carbon larger and then sand it or cut it back to exactly where you want it. And on something like this, like a window, you don't really know where to sand the edge back and you try and put carbon on and off and you can't trace it because you can only see it from the back side and it's almost impossible to get that perfect edge you want. And then one day I finally realized, you know, I'm always uh, complaining anytime I have regular masking tape and I didn't use clear tape, the carbon sticks to it and it won't come off. It bonds into the masking tape. So what I do now is I'm drawing these arcs and I'm holding this yellow line an eighth inch away from um, my trim inside. Gives me a nice reveal and I can make a perfect eighth inch line all the way around and have it really nice looking. But then what I'm able to do is just run carbon fiber large go right over my yellow tape. What's really nice is I just cover up all the tape and I can just go really big. When I pull it off, the yellow tape is stuck on the back side and you can't get it off. It gives you the perfect place to take and sand and take a Dremel out and cut all your arcs on both sides of this carbon fiber window trim and not trying to guess where it is on and off. It's exact, and so you have a bright yellow line on your black carbon fiber. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this out, put some nice big radiuses on it, do the same on the outside, and then we can just go crazy with carbon fiber. This will be done, back to work. Okay guys, I've made a mess. <laughs> I'm really happy with how it's turning out. So what I've done is I've done four layers of carbon fiber down, um, just a wet layup and put it right down on the yellow tape I had. Once I got the four layers down and I overlapped all the layers. So I actually have, depending, some of the layers, layers I just butted and others, at least every other one I overlap. So if it's a four layer wrap, the corners and joints will have six, seven layers on them. Get them really strong on the corners. Then what I've done, since the window is the thickness of the window coming out, plus the pad that stuck it in. I wanted to blend down the carbon fiber that goes to the original paint. So rather than doing bodywork and Bondo and adding a whole bunch of weight, 
While the carbon fiber was still wet, I spread in the micro to fill that little teeny step between the window and the aircraft. Now it looks like I've got a lot on here. It's actually about an eighth of an inch thick at the thickest points. Uh, right now it's a little thicker than that because I went heavy. I'll sand it back down and feather it all in and make a, a nice smooth rounded transition rather than the steps of the thickness of the window. So once I get it sanded down, then I'll go ahead and add the last three layers of carbon fiber over top of it and it will have a perfect finished edge. Because I don't want body work and I want raw, clear carbon fiber rather than paint, I've got to get the body work or this filler area done before the last layers of carbon fiber. So it becomes a two-step process. All right, sand is done. So most of this just has a trace. Some of these areas that are even really white are just a little bit of micro, but what's really nice, I've got all the layers of carbon fiber on the backside, then I've got the micro in. When I put the next several layers over top of this, it's gonna make the rest of this frame more rigid. So if I ever need to replace this window, I'll be able to pull the screws out, pop this frame off, and these little traces of micro that are going between the steps of the Lexan and the body, all these little ridges make these little triangle stiff points so that it doesn't flex, it doesn't move so much in the heat. It's kind of like putting a, a honeycomb inside, but body work at the same time. So it's really amazing when this is done, I'll show you how much it weighs. It's gonna be feather light, but really rigid. So um, I got a little bit more sanding, maybe 15 minutes, really nothing. Clean up and I'm gonna lay some more carbon. Let's get back to work. This will give you a good, kind of a good idea what this is gonna start to look like with the clear coat. Just getting it wet. All right, it's sanded. Got a little bit more to do on it, but pretty much done. Um, I'm gonna put several layers of clear coat on it to make it look like the rest of the carbon fiber, but for now, for those of you who are wondering what this would weigh, including all the filler and micro, try and balance it on my finger. Just, uh, just under a pound, about 15, five uh, ounces. So about one pound for a part that's over three feet across, 30 inches tall, has micro filler in it, and we held it under a pound. So <laughs> that's pretty awesome. And then this, you get an idea how it works. I've got this 90 degree on the top, so it can pair up to there. And then slide it right into place like that. So everything fits right up. I got lucky. <laughs> I was worried as a couple places I thought I might have burned through the sandpaper and touched the paint, but I didn't. I had two layers, so got lucky there. But that is going to be a great finish. So I'm going to get it clear coated. I've still got the. <laughs> The film on here just to protect it so that's why it's all murky and oh <laughs> i haven't tested draco dna and scrappy today so yep we still have brake fluid <laughs> <laughs> hey guys i want to show you one of the coolest things we've had in this hangar all the same time so of course we got scrappy you guys all know what that is but check this out over here we have my wife my daughter alex working on her carbon cub. So she's actually building her plane. So far she's holding true to it. I may have done a little welding, but uh, we're gonna teach her how to do that. And then check this out. It's a Cub Crofters carbon cub factory going on in here because Mark's working on his plane. This is a, is a carbon cub, super modified for a six cylinder. And Jason Sneed, same thing over here. He's got his plane going. So if you count the other cubs in the other hangar, there are five Cub Crafters carbon cubs in various... Six. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are six cub, carbon cub, Cub Crafter products in here, from a super modified scrappy seven. Seven. to very... Is there seven? Seven, yeah. That's right. Seven. Oh. Yeah, I gotta count mine. Mark, oh, yeah. Counting marks were at seven Cub Crafters <laughs> carbon cubs. Uh, you might think we like them. So anyway, <laughs> two six cylinders, an eight cylinder, 
a four cylinder we're going to do a few mods on but primarily mostly that one's going to stay carbon cub ex3 with my wife's flair to it but everyone's here working at once so four planes being built same time same shop thank you cup crafters let's get back to work all right guys i've got the other side put together it's drying right now now i've got to make the side with a door so i've built in a hinge a carbon fiber step coming out to attach the trim that goes around the wing and then this door will pivot this way now it won't go all the way because the quickles are in the way but what i'm doing is i've got these little bars that i will fill this carbon fiber square tube with micro to about here and i'll put a bar in it and then this bar and i'll put micro inside this tube about four inches down through here around that bar in this then i'll slide these two together and that will go like that and then they'll dry together so that the seam has a carbon fiber rod in it a really heavy gauge carbon fiber rod in there and we'll let it dry like that overnight i'll do both these two sides with the bars in them and uh then i'll bond in bars into this one and we'll work our way all the way around but so far it's going really really well so let's get back to work all right so we've got this bonded had a white layer of thin layer of micro on the bar also had a thin layer on the back side of this hinge and then i've got about a dozen more holes to put clicos in but uh, right now what i want to do is get this paired up with the side of the aircraft. I'll tape it there, and then I'll do both sides. Then later, right now, I don't wanna rely on just that bonded joint, though it should be plenty strong. I'm gonna end up sanding this together and then wrapping carbon fiber from this side around to the other side a couple layers so that I've got a, a stranded carbon fiber connecting that tube to the hinge. So. I have a chemical bond and a mechanical bond. This is just temporary. Now what I did, you can see these little sticks going all the way around the frame. These are all wrapped in clear tape so nothing sticks to it. But that is to give the gap so as this door opens and closes, it will never touch and grind and get scratch marks on the door. So I've actually got two sticks. You can see one, the other one's under, underneath the layer of foil. So it'll give me just about an eighth of an inch gap from the tube frame, but then the carbon fiber trim is gonna come all the way around and be uh, enclose the whole thing and wrap everything. So this is the start, <laughs> kind of a mess, but it won't be. Let's get back to work. Moments later. All right, I made a mess. <laughs> okay, so it looks like a disaster. <laughs> I make so much, I made everything with duct tape. Duct tape, Dalton. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, try to stay calm, Rand. Stay calm? Hold it together. Hold it together with what? All right, so what I've done is I've dovetailed all these together. Basically a dovetail, but it's actually a carbon fiber rod, joint to joint. So everywhere, every one of these carbon fiber tubes go together, there's a rod that passes through all the joints. And then I made a internal uh, dam just out of duct tape about four inches down from each joint and then I was able to fill the entire tube with micro from this point well on this little one right here I filled it clear full all the way up to that joint is full of micro with carbon fiber tube pass-throughs so everywhere there's a joint it's it's a solid bar from there to there like that so it's a solid bar with micro with a carbon fiber tube so it's going to be extremely strong but that just gives me a frame and the contour of the aircraft it's not enough that i feel comfortable well it probably would be to open the window in flight but i need a whole lot more to it so the next layer after this is all done i'll strip everything off retape it all i'm going to make a carbon fiber part that comes around bonds to this permanently goes around the backside comes back under and reconnects. So I'm basically gonna wrap the carbon fiber tube with a carbon fiber wrap that brings my overlap for the door to close against. Then I'll put the Lexan in, and then I'll put a layer over top, 
that is with pass-through bolts that bolt it all together. So if I ever need to replace the window, I can pull out the bolts, disassemble it, put in a new window and put it back together. So this is the start of a long day. <laughs> I got a lot more to do. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, uh, it's just past midnight and I've got this all sanded and done. Um, it's got a lot more work left to do, but what's really amazing is how light this is. Yet I've got no flex in it. Um, and I can even move the aircraft with it. So I'm really happy. I got a lot more in me, so I'm gonna get back to work. The following day. Okay guys, we're getting closer. Still working on this door. Um, part way into day two. I've got this bottom part built. I've now got the joints all wrapped in carbon. Still got a lot more strength to add. Right here, I've started the twist lock door mechanism. It will be spring loaded with an over centered lock. So once you go past a certain point, it springs further and locks it so vibration can't bring it out because it's over centered and you'll bring it back. This mechanism I got out of a Cub Crafters Carbon Cub and I love their latching system. It doesn't work for my door assembly completely other than this inner part that I got. The rest and everything in here, I'm gonna machine up all my own components um, to have a really tight tolerance push through these little insert tubes I made and the bars that will go inside the airframe to lock the door in place. But I have to have some pivot knuckles on little bushings because of the angle change here. So I've got about six parts to make, including some ends here for some custom made scrappy door handles go on both sides so i'm gonna go draft this up machine some parts get them installed and then i'll go back to doing a little 90 degree uh return lip on this that will hook this edge of the door so getting closer really solid rigid now but uh, it's going to keep getting stronger so lots to do let's get back to work Hey guys, all right, I'm really sorry I didn't record this process. I was going to, and then it started getting away from me and just got distracted trying to keep up with it. I finally got a chance to take a break, so I paused. And then? Before I started, I made a return carbon fiber 90 that I pre-did. It came from inside the door frame out and returned this way to make the overlap for the door to close against like this. Uh, and then? And I bonded that I pre-cut them all and bonded them together on the inside and taped the back so I could bond it with some uh, filler and micro, close the door with the tape coming around the back holding it, and then it caused the resin to come out the front of the seam of the 90 and the square door. And then? Then I laid this all up at the same time so that I've got all of it done at once, all wet. And then? Once I finish putting the peel ply on here, I got some trimming and cleanup to do. I'll go ahead and um, pull, pull it off, pull the door off. And then. No and then. And then. No and then. And then. And then take another piece of carbon fiber, trim it back, take another piece of carbon fiber, go all the way around the back, around the 90 degree part that's bonded for the return lip. inside and back out so it basically makes an entire loop around itself put several layers that way so that the square tube the 90 and the overlap are all one part wrapped together it's going to make it a really stiff door so i can open it at flight at any speed and uh i'm not necessarily any speed we'll test that but the door is not going to go anywhere but i don't want to open it too fast and have it slam or pull it out of my hand but the door itself is going to be plenty strong to do it so uh, I got a lot more work to do. Sorry I didn't get a video of that, but let's get back to work. Hey guys, all right, getting closer, trying to knock this door out in just a couple days. A um, lot of little steps, but you can now see I've wrapped carbon all the way around this side, around the little 90 degree angle I put in here, around the entire tube, back out this side, so I've clamshelled the L bracket into it that I had bonded while it was in place and then laid up the front that gave me all the contour. You can see the contour of the door and all the contours in here that match the trim so that when this closes, this door actually overlaps the carbon fiber trim that's already there. So um, 
I'll kind of give you a quick look at how this goes on and what we're doing next. There's already screws embedded into this top beam. And then that is the fit right there. It's gonna be a really tight fit. Should be, for the most part, airtight. It will also have a rubber seal. Once the rubber seal's on, it will be airtight. So that's it. This I've just got taped up. I've got all the parts done and made to get installed after I get the finish work done on this. What I'm gonna do now is bond in the window um, and then make a carbon fiber trim that trims out the window so I don't have a, a uh, window edge showing. I want it all fitted like a closed in door, not just um, plexi on the outside or Lexan on the outside. So uh, I don't know, that's a lot more work, but we're gonna dive into it, let's get it done.